Can you still hear him? No, just you. Which Luca actor recorded most of the film from their mom's closet? We see the final product, but behind the scenes recording remotely during a pandemic looks very, very different than normal. This was actually the first time some of these actors had ever done voice work. Today, we're checking out the performers behind the voices that brought us Disney Pixar's Luca. I know your problem. You got a Bruno in your head. A Bruno. Jacob Tremblay is only 14 years old, but already a total pro in the film world. He's done roles in live-action movies like Room and Wonder. However, voice work is a very different experience and discipline. For Tremblay, it wasn't too much of an issue anyway since he has years of experience doing it. He's been the voice of Pete for the past few years in Pete and the Cat, and of course, he will also be voicing Flounder in the upcoming live-action remake of The Little Mermaid. His animated voice really brings this hilarious moment to life. Silencio Bruno! Silencio Bruno! Silencio Bruno! Silencio Bruno! Seeing Emma Berman performing behind the scenes makes it so hard to believe that she's still pretty new to the business. This is actually her first major project. Are you in town for the race? The Puerto Rosso Cup? While the trio may just be meeting, it feels like they're already at the beginning of a great adventure and friendship together. Emma Berman's sweetness comes through on the screen and behind the scenes, which is extra impressive considering she's not acting opposite anyone. Jack Dylan Grazer has done plenty of movies and TV shows already. I've been doing this forever. But it's still early days for Grazer when it comes to voiceover performance. It's, 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 it's been so much fun. It's really has. It really has. So for him, it was a big adjustment since he couldn't actually look at the people he was acting opposite. However, he really got into it and, as we can see, was definitely able to get his point across. Luca, it's simple. Just don't listen to stupid Bruno. This pep talk works. Fortunately, it wasn't as drastic for Tremblay himself as it happened behind the scenes, but he managed to portray the panic extremely well. He's dead, I killed him. The worry that he'd lost his best friend comes through perfectly in his voice here. This kind of acting should be helpful when he's taking on Flounder who goes through plenty of panic of his own. Alberto communicating the fact that he's a sea monster could definitely be tricky, but somehow newcomer Grazer does a spot-on job. It's fine, I'm not human. What's even more impressive about this performance is that it was done out of his mom's closet, very, very, very far from this quaint Italian town. However, Grazer had actually just been in Italy only two months before he discovered he'd gotten the part, filming another project. So luckily, everything in his life felt pretty in sync and he could feel those Italian vibes. Wait. It's called Phantom Tale. He'll get used to it. Watching Berman behind the scenes is so exciting because she's so animated while she's performing. We can see how it emanates what her character does on screen perfectly. Julia is an optimistic girl, but even she has her doubts about the abilities of these sea monsters, and understandably so. You can't swim. You can barely ride a bike. Set on disastro. We wouldn't be a fan of disastros either. How Alberto learned to walk so well, we're not entirely sure, but he seems pretty well versed when it comes to it. Luca does have a great and enthusiastic teacher, even though his instructions might not be the most helpful sometimes. Walking is just like swimming, but with no fins or tail, and also there's no water. The chemistry between Alberto and Luca is really special, which is extra impressive since the actors haven't actually met in person. That's right, they developed this beautiful on-screen friendship and all without ever actually speaking face to face. It was like, oh, wow. Emma Berman makes for a very good trainer, maybe even better than Alberto. There was no hesitancy in getting them into shape. The boys are definitely being well prepared by her as she's clearly thought of everything. Can you dodge obstacles? What if an old lady crosses your path? We would just love to see Berman and her co-stars performing the scene live as well. Learning how to ride a bike is a pretty amazing feeling for anyone, but especially for a sea monster who, let's remember, also just learned how to walk. Tremblay's enthusiasm radiates behind the scenes. Julia said, look up, and then all of a sudden, I was riding it. We can see that he and Luca are very similarly animated in their performance. The town will cheer our names. Ercole's life will be ruined. 
Once Julia has her mind set on something, there is no turning back. We can feel just how excited not only Julia is, but Berman the actress herself. It was definitely really, really good. The enthusiasm about working with her new friends and feeling re-inspired really comes through in this scene. They definitely sound like winners. That's why we gotta win! One of the sweetest moments in the whole movie is definitely when Luca describes the dreams of his adventures with Alberto around the world. Every day, me and Alberto are gonna ride someplace new. It's a touching and tender moment that translates beautifully to the screen. Tremblay's presence comes through behind the mic and we can hear every single sweet note. And every night, we'll sleep under the fish. Julia is one of the most organized and determined kids that we've ever seen. I actually relate to her in some ways. Considering her positivity and how well she motivates the team, it seems like their chances are pretty good. We have one week to train. Pronte? A poste via! They won the Enthusiasm Award for sure. We love seeing Berman's physicality behind the mic. She embodies the character of Julia perfectly. Too much. My mom says sometimes I'm too much. No way. Not for me. Jim Gaffigan is usually a stand-up comedian, so it makes sense why his performance is so strong and his comedic timing so on point. All right, young man. You're not fooling anyone. His sneak attack on this unexpected Italian child brings a hilarious moment to the movie, one that Gaffigan portrays perfectly. It's time for us to go home. His energy behind the mic really amps the scene up. This moment under the fish, or stars, depending on if you're a human or a sea monster, is a pretty magical moment no matter how you look at it. That's a torno. It's my favorite. Berman's performance is genuine and full of sweetness. We can really understand how Luca would become so excited by the world and all of its wonders, seeing it through Julia's eyes. This is how machines fly? See. And there are big towns called cities. So cool, right? When she's on land, Luca's mom, Daniela, does not hold back. Even her husband, Lorenzo, is a bit nervous by her boldness. Honey, uh... Gaffigan's hesitant performance is very obvious behind the mic as well. Honey, no. I, I, I don't. It's amazing that his chemistry with Maya Rudolph was so strong, even though they didn't get to act with each other directly. We look horrifying. Ugh, gross. Voiceover acting takes such skill, but these actors have done an incredible job at bringing the characters to life. It's so surprising to know that this was Grazer's first time doing animation. We have no doubt that he'll be doing a lot more in future. What was your favorite behind the mic moment? 